Today is a very sombre moment, and it's a, a very big loss for the anime community as a whole. What is up guys, welcome to Boomer Base, and today I'm here to bring a very very sad video as many of you probably already know that Akira Toriyama passed away today he was such a big and important part of many people's lives he was one of the reasons why people got into anime he's known as the grandfather of anime you name it he's affected you in some form of way whether you even like anime or not so today I'm going to share my story about why he impacted me so much growing up. First off, I just wanted to say that this is just a tribute. This is just my story of how Akira Toriyama affected my life. When I was younger, I watched many, many anime without knowing they were anime. My journey with anime hadn't even started yet. I was watching, you know, Beyblade, Digimon, Pokemon... Metabots, Duel Masters, Beedemon, Sailor Moon, Monster Rancher, you, you, you know, Flint the Time Detective, you name it. I was watching tons of anime without knowing. And the first time I found out what anime was and considered what I watching was watching was anime was Dragon Ball Z. I still caught a lot of Dragon Ball on Fox Kids growing up and Jetix and things like that and Cartoon Network. But Dragon Ball Z is where it mainly started for me. Like a lot of people, Akira Toriyama has been someone that has affected a lot of people's lives. His presence in the anime community, in the anime community as a whole, as you know, you can't even compare it to words. He's done so much for the anime community as a whole by bringing it to the West, making it what I would call popular and things like that. My journey started with Dragon Ball Z and it only ever stayed. There's only been two franchises that I can think of that have stayed with me from childhood and are still with me and still enjoyed and watched today. One is Pokemon, the other one is the Dragon Ball series as a whole. You know, Akira Toriyama has affected a lot of people. He's been a part of a lot of people's lives. Some people, you know, love Dragon Ball Z so much for the story, for the art. Some people love the fight scenes. Some people love the power-ups, you know, the shonen tropes. Some people love the villains, the voice acting, the screams. You, you name it. There is something in Dragon Ball as a whole that you'll like. You know, whether it's the fight scenes that have made you want to, you know, get bigger and go to the gym, provided you with some comfort during some form of bullying. You know, there are tons of things that I could go through. A lot of people have had their own unique experience. And, you know, I'm not going to say anything like Dragon Ball Z saved my life or anything like that. It just helped me get by. It was a show that I watched as a kid. I rewatched multiple times as a teenager. I've rewatched multiple times as an adult, and it's a show that I just love, despite any of the faults that it has. Here I'm just going to talk about, you know, some of the pieces of media that I've had, you know. I've got all of Dragon Ball on manga and things. I eventually want to try and get all of Dragon Ball Z and Super and things, but, you know, money is a thing. Um, you know, I've got all the Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super movies. I love going to watch them, I just love watching the story unfold, waiting for Goku to power up or for the fusion dance for, you know, whoever to be on screen. Within Dragon Ball, I love so many of the characters, I love so many of the villains, you know, Christ, I've got three Dragon Ball characters tattooed on me, you know, I've got Kid Buu, I've got Piccolo, and I've got Vegeta in Super Saiyan Blue and Super Saiyan God. And, you know, that speaks testament to itself. I've got one of my favourite series tattooed on me. And that's something that's permanent and will stay. You know, I've got all of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT. And most of Super, you know, on physical and things. There's been people like Derek Padula who have dove so far into Dragon Ball culture. 
the Dragon Ball is a part of a lot of my academic anime books and things, and it's crazy when I was starting to gather up some of the bits of Dragon Ball that I have that you'll be seeing across the screen and things, just like how much I have and how much different things I have, you know, from starting all the way back from playing Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22 on the PS1, you know, that was a game that I loved playing as a kid. You know, take that all the way up to playing Dragon Ball um, Budokai Tenkaichi 1 and 2 across the PlayStation 1 and Ga uh, PlayStation 2 and GameCube and things. You know, I didn't have all the Dragon Ball Z games and things. You know, I still only have a few bits now, but I have a lot of them and a lot of different things, you know, from things like J-Star's Victory on the PlayStation 4 and PS3 and things, you know, where it's a culmination of a load of the shonen characters, you know, Dragon Ball still makes an appearance. When I say Dragon Ball, like Goku and Vegeta mainly make an appearance. You know, on the 360, I still own the Budokai HD collection, which, you know, has Budokai and Budokai 3 remastered and things. You know, they were great fighting games. They were great f games to play with friends. In terms of the games, I'd have to say... The Dragon Ball games that impacted me the most were, I, w I won't say an underrated one, but I think one that doesn't get talked about as much as it should, and that's the Dragon Ball Raging Blast 1 and 2 franchise. They were, and still are, some of my most famous fighting games. They're the, they're the Tekken and Mortal Kombat for me, these two games. I, I love them as a whole. I loved seeing the what-ifs of Super Saiyan 3, Broly and Vegeta and things like that. You know, buying a, a video game of a franchise I love and getting a special sort of, you know, episode movie, which was the Dragon Ball plan to eradicate the Super Saiyans and things, where it had a, you know... A new unique villain, Hatchiak. That was crazy to me. You know, I've gone and bought some of the Dragon Ball games on the Famicom from Japan and things, just because the art's so good. You know, somewhere there's a Chrono Trigger game somewhere. You know, Akira Toriyama did art for many other different games like Dragon Quest and Chrono Trigger and things like that. He had his series of like Doctor Slump and things like that. It's it's crazy how much he's infected the anime world and it's so wonderful that even today on such a sad day like I've not really had much on my social media other than posts about Akira Toriyama and I think despite the sadness of it it's wonderful that a death in the anime community has been received and is being broadcasted as widely as it is. You know, we've had games like the Dragon Ball Z Fighter Z and the Xenoverse things that have been crazy good. Getting to create your own character where you feel like you're part of the Dragon Ball universe has been amazing. You know, the Z Fighters was a very, very fun game and things. And, you know, having competitive Dragon Ball video games and players is crazy to think about from a world that started off as you know pen to paper growing up watching you know all of dragon ball z experiencing it like many others having you know the goku versus raditz fight goku versus freezer the ginyu force having goku versus the androids goku versus cell goku versus boo things like that you know having the Super Saiyan 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, God, Super Saiyan Blue, you know, it's it's just crazy how much it's affected my life, and it's affected my life in such a positive way, and all I can say is that it's been a very hard day for me, it's been a very hard day for a lot of people, it's a series that will be immortal, and, you know, It's weird to think that I'm almost getting, like, upset on camera talking about something that's, like, affected my life in, like, film and TV as a whole. And it's quite weird to feel vulnerable on camera like this. So, I don't... I, don't, I won't say too much more. Like, it's a series in the show that I love, even despite its faults. And he'll be sorely missed. And I'm hoping that 
only positive things come from his death, whether it's a continuation of the Dragon Ball Super manga in the way that he wanted, whether we will see other pieces of his work animated, who, who knows, maybe we'll get anniversary things for video games, you know, things like that, it's, you know, I'm hoping the only positives come from it. Thank you very much for watching, thank you for staying and experiencing me being vulnerable in things, it was quite unique and odd, um, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, you know, only post positive vibes you know, grieve your way that you need to if this has impacted you and I hope you can remember Akira Toriyama the same way that I did and if you haven't ever stumbled across him before or discovered his work or watched his work or read his work now's the best time to do so